What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, make sure you take a second and go down there and subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our videos. But in today's video, we're gonna be hooking up this Full Creep Supply RODI unit. And basically what this is gonna do is give us the cleanest, freshest water for our fish tanks. If you don't know, basically using tap water is a big no-no for your fish tank because it's got a lot of minerals phosphates and stuff like that that they add into the water that you don't want in your fish tank and i'll show you a perfect example of why if you use tap water for your fish tank this is what you can have happen to you basically we are having a huge brown diatome outbreak in our salt water tank right now and it's because i'm very guilty we've been using salt water our other house we've never had an issue with it and then when we made the move to this house every time we use tap water well not every time but Every once in a while we'll get these outbreaks and I'm thinking it's because the tap water has all kinds of extra phosphates and I think our tap water is pretty bad compared to most. So we went ahead, took the plunge and got the bulk reef supply, 75 gallon per day RODI system. This is a six stage. Basically how many stages you get depends on how bad your tap water is in your area. If you don't know, just get the most stages you can afford. It's really not a big price difference between them. So you may as well just, I went for the six stage as you can see. I think this is gonna be plenty to get us zero TDS, nice clean water for our tank. So we're gonna go over how to install this today. I'm gonna get this all hooked up so we can start getting some fresh, clean water for our tank and hopefully eliminate those diatome outbreaks. And it also just makes your fish health here and everything grow a lot better and nicer. So you have a nicer, better quality water. So, I'm going to go ahead and get into how to install this. Alright, so this is everything it comes with when you order it. Now, depending what how many stages you get is depending on whether you get this or not. This is the sixth stage. The five stage will be just one of these DI canisters. You can also just get the four stage without the DI. But I suggest getting the most you can afford, so it's going to give you the purest water. Um, the sixth stage, this one is the 75 gallon per day model. It came with a pressure gauge and also came with a dual TDS meter, which is really nice to be able to see what TDS we're getting in our finished water. So this is everything else it comes with, comes with all the necessary fittings with multiple ways that you can hook it up. Basically, this is for your wastewater line. You can tap right into the drain pipe underneath your sink if you want to do it that way, or you can just feed the black line down into your sink for a little bit less permanent of an install. Um, comes with multiple fittings. You can attach it to your washer machine feed line if you're going to have this hooked up in the washroom. You can also have it hooked up under the sink. This taps into that line. Basically, you screw your cold feed line here, and then the line that goes up this way there, and then your feed line to this unit will go right into here to the push fitting. You can also just have it screwed into your sink, your actual faucet itself. That's a little bit less permanent of a way to do it. We're basically going to install this under our kitchen sink underneath and we're going to do the more permanent solution. We're going to drill a small hole in the drain pipe for the wastewater, attach this to the cold feed and show you how to do all that. And it's actually really, really simple. So let's get to the kitchen. All right. Now underneath your sink, basically this is going to be where the wastewater we're going to drill into and attach that. And you're going to want to find your cold feed. Ours is over here. And it goes up and you want to turn that off. We already did that. Now, the lines I'm talking about are the ones that come with the RODI unit. Your red line is your cold water feed. That's what feeds the water. The black one is your waste line and that's the one we're going to connect into our pipe that comes down right above the trap here. Or you can feed that just into your sink and that's where your wastewater will go. And this blue is your finished product and that's what you're going to either connect to your DI canisters or you're going to put into your bucket and that's your finished water so really easy we're going to go ahead and drill our pipe here you're going to need a quarter inch drill bit and a drill just drill a small hole and then we'll show you how to hook up the fittings all right so we got our hole drilled it comes with this little foam gasket that kind of goes around where you drill the hole and what that's going to do is when you put this clamp on it's going to create or stop any leaks from happening or anything so basically that's what you'll do Drill your hole, put the little foam gasket on, and then this piece just clamps around that hole. That's pretty much it. 
And then that's a push lock fitting that you push the black line into and that's where all your wastewater goes. And that's all hooked up. All right, so a quick little update. We got our clamp on. You saw us drill the hole and put the gasket on. We got this nice and tight. You want to put that adapter right above here. It'll screw on the top and then you screw the line into the top of that. And then your red line will come out of there. Basically what you'll want to do is cut yourself a short section of it and then you'll push that in there. It's just a push fitting. You just push it in. You'll feel it kind of stop. And you put this little valve on the other end of that. So when you're not making RO water, you can simply shut that off and you're not making water. And then when you're ready to make water, you just turn that valve on and you're good to go. So cut yourself a short little piece off of the red line and attach it like that. There's your adapter, red line into the valve. And then now we're just gonna simply place our RO unit wherever we want under the sink. I'm gonna try to tuck it back here nice and then hook the red line into the other end of your valve, black line into the hole you drilled, and then your blue line will either go into your bucket or into your DI and then from your DI to your bucket. So we're almost done guys. Let's get this in there and get it finished up. All right, so everything's in there. We made our connections. As you can see, we got the black going to the drain, red to the feed, and then our blue comes into our DI, and then the DI blue coming out will be our finished water. Um, I tried to not cut any of this line in case my circumstances changes and I have to mount it somewhere different or some different kind of way. I wanted to keep all my tubing. The only reason I cut was to cut that little strip for the end that goes in between your valve. Other than that, I just kept everything bundled up real nice and tied together nice and clean. Everything ran the way it's supposed to and it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with everything. So now the next step is to turn on our water, check for any leaks and tighten those connections. There may be a leak in these connections here. I didn't use any plumber's tape or anything. I'm not sure that you need to. So just turn on your water. If there's any leaks, go ahead and take that back apart and maybe put some plumber's tape. I don't think you'll need to. It doesn't mention anything in the instructions about it, but if you have a leak, address it until there's no more leaks and then you're pretty much ready to go. All right, so we got our water turned on. The system is running. Check for leaks and there's no leaks no moist or damp areas basically just go over all your connections and kind of feel around and make sure nothing's coming out there's no leaks or anything like that also check around the canisters i mean they're not perfect and maybe they left one a little loose doesn't hurt to check everything's running you can see the water there in the di canister um when you first turn it on if you have the plus systems and have this flush valve you want to open that up and let that flush for a couple minutes while it's running but and then turn that back off um, check your pressure. Our pressure is about 44 PSI. It's honestly a little low. They recommend 50 to 80. Anything below 35 and they said you're not going to have real great production or purity. So kind of depends. You can get a booster pump to help that and I think we're going to go ahead and do that if we start having issues. But so far it seems to be working fine. 44 is a little low on the low side. Like I said, they want 50 to 80. They said that's what they recommend, but nothing below 35 really, or you're gonna want a booster pump, which they sell. That comes with all the hardware you need. And I'm assuming it just ties into your feed line, helps up the pressure and then feeds into the system. So we might look into getting that, but everything's running pretty good. We have our water production started and basically it should be a steady stream of water. It keeps going off and on, which leads me to believe we're going to have to do the booster pump. I think that's due to the low pressure, but we'll see. So far, our TDS meter, we turn that on and it's saying zero TDS. So that's good. Nice, fresh water. You probably can't see it on there, but you can also adjust it to your TDS in right now, which is 13. So 13 coming out of the membrane. And then once it goes through our DI canisters, it is zero. So can't get any better than that, guys. Zero is what you want everything's running good so we are good to go making nice fresh water no more impurities hopefully that'll get rid of our diatome and algae problems and just give us a better overall healthy fish tank so sweet so i guess that's going to be it for today's video guys like i said this is an investment you're definitely going to want to make especially if you're running a saltwater reef tank anything kind of more on the advanced side 
but definitely a must do if you're running a salt water tank. You want the purest, freshest, cleanest water you can get in your tank and tap water is not gonna do it. Tap water is full of impurities, full of extra minerals and chlorine and phosphates and silicates and everything like that, which just wreaks havoc on a fish tank, especially salt water. So definitely something you're gonna wanna do. It's a little pricey, but it'll end up paying for itself. No more runs to your local fish store if you're doing that for your water. No more nasty looking tank. So it'll be good to go. And it's a 10 minute install guys, super simple and a must do for your fish tank. So definitely do one of these RO systems guys. It's gonna be worth it in the long run. It's gonna give you a happy, healthy tank. So anyways, that's gonna be it for today's video guys. If you liked it, make sure you give it a good thumbs up, help out the video and the channel. Go down there and subscribe if you're new, ring the bell next to it, keep an eye out for all our future videos, and we'll see you next time.